Hello, I'm George Cairns, and in this video lesson we're going to take a variety of ordinary source images like this city gent, an apple, a nice computer-generated curtain backdrop, and a sky image, and we're going to combine them together using a variety of tools and techniques to create this surrealist masterpiece in the style of René Magritte. We've used the Son of Man painting that he created with the bowler hatted gent and the apple floating in front of his head as our inspiration. But we've also added a few extra effects of our own, like kinking the curtain using the warp transform tool, and I'm going to show you how to do something similar in Elements as well as a workaround because we're using Photoshop CS, but you can warp the curtain in Elements as well. We've also got layer masks here which allow us to cut a hole in the curtain but not actually destroy the original curtain's pixels which means you can actually move this silhouette shape around inside the curtain to create the hole in exactly the right place to get a nice balance between the two figures. We're also going to use the pen tool to make a selection around the tie creating nice curved paths and we're going to also clip adjustment layers to various items like the city gent just to darken his tones and by clipping these to these particular layers they don't change the tones in other parts of the image. So let's kick off with a blank canvas by going to file new and choosing a new document. Keep the resolution at 300 for a nice high quality print if you do need to print and set the drop down menu to inches and then type in 16 by 12.78 and set the background contents to transparent and then what we'll do is click OK to create our new document to add all of the other elements to. Let me just press Z for the zoom tool, right click and fit on screen. The next thing to do is to go to File Open and open up Magritte1.jpg and we're going to make a selection to isolate this chap from his background using the Magic Wand tool which is this one here. Now there's a danger when we sample the white background that we might sample some of the lighter parts of the skin so let's reduce the tolerance down to 30 and if we tick contiguous then when we click to sample the background it won't sample similar pixels in the shirt because they're not connected to the original sampled area. You can then hold the shift key down and click to add to the selection. You can see there's a little plus sign by the magic wand and then in a few clicks you should have the background selected like so. Next thing to do is to go to select inverse to then select the gent instead of the white background. Once you've made your selection, you can click on the Refine Edge button to fine-tune things. And if we go to View and choose on Black, then you can see we've got a bit of a white edge around the figure, and that is the white background showing up as a fringe. So what we can do is just double-click to select that view, and I'll show you how to fine-tune things in Photoshop CS5, and then we can have a quick look at Elements to show you the more simple Refine Edge command there to see how you can deal with this fringe. To get a closer look at the fringe, grab the Zoom tool and click to zoom right into a nice large size so you can see the fringe more clearly around the edge of the chap and then if we type 5.5 in the radius slider this is an intelligent way of actually refining the edge and you'll see a little progress bar appears down here on the left goes round and round for a little while and you can see now it's eaten into the edge of the selection quite effectively and removed some of that white fringe but it does look a little bit sharp and cut out and you might have some jaggy edges here as well so what you can do is type in smooth of 20 just to get rid of blocky jagged edges and soften the edge by typing in a feather of 1 and if you set the contrast to 25% you should see a softer edge. It's still catching up with all the commands and there we are shaping up quite nicely. Another way to lose the edge around the city gent is to go to shift edge and slide it to the left to around about minus 14% and that just tightens it in a little bit more and helps get rid of any white pixels clinging to the edge of the hat and the body and you can also click decontaminate colors and set this to 100% and that's a cool way in Photoshop CS5 of removing color fringes. And you can see we've got a nice soft edge now, we can set it to new a layer and then click OK and it will appear on a new layer against a transparent background which we can then use to select and remove it very easily and pop it against a sky background. So that's how you refine the edge to get rid of any white fringes and there's our city gent against a transparent background and it automatically turns off the original layer. Now a quick side trip into Photoshop Elements before we continue just to show you how to use the Refine Edge button there to make a selection. You can see we've got the Smooth option so we can type in 20 to get rid of the jagged selection there. We can also view on black just to see how the selection is shaping up. There's a little bit of a fringe there and what we can do is uh, feather it with a value of 1 and if you do Contract Expand you can tighten the fringe this way just to eat into the edge of the city gent and that takes a little while to catch up. So minus 15% should just tuck it in nicely 
and that gives you a nice soft edge selection without too much of a white color fringe. You can then click OK to apply that and you can see it's much more simple um, and maybe not as effective with complex selections but on the whole you can still get a pretty good result. So there's our refined element selection. You can go to edit, copy and you're ready to move on to the next stage to paste it in to our transparent document. In Photoshop CS5 you can choose select all and then go to edit copy and we're copying the chap into the clipboard so we're now ready to go into our transparent document and paste him in. So go to the transparent document we created at the start and go to edit paste and he will appear like so. You can grab the move tool, drag him to the left, we can press Control T to get the free transform tool and then what we can do is go and type in width and height of 77%. If you click here to lock them together then you can type in one box and it will change the other box like so. Hit return to apply the change. You can then use the move tool to reposition the chap to the left of the frame. I'm just going to control minus to zoom out so I can see the edge of the frame there just to make sure we're in the right place. Round about there should do the trick. We can always fine tune him later if need be. The apple in Magritte 2 dot JPEG is more challenging to select because you've got very similar tones at the edge here between the light apple and the white background. So grab the magic wand and this time reduce the tolerance to 20. It's also worth unticking the contiguous box because you want to get bits of white that are hidden inside these areas here as well. So just click to start selecting and you can see it's got these white bits like so. You can then shift click to add to the selection and then you've got the apple selected. We need to then select inverse that by going to this option here, select inverse and then finally refine edge and that allows us on black to see the very jagged selection that we've got on the apple. And to get rid of the jaggies, smooth is always a good place to start, so set that to 20, set a feather to around about 0.9 for a nice soft delicate edge and we can also tweak the shift edge option to tighten it a little bit by setting this to minus 27, so just drag that or type in a value like so and that should improve things. We've still got a hot spot here with a hole in it but we can fix that using layer masks, especially if we output to new layer with layer mask. Click OK and you'll see the apple against a transparent background using a layer mask. Now layer masks are cool for continuing to refine problematic selections. So we can modify the mask in due course just to fine tune things but let's just add it to our main project by clicking up here and choosing two up and you can see both of the documents open side by side. Just click on the thumbnail here and drag it onto the main project like so and it should then add the apple. You can then click here again and choose consolidate all oh, this one here will give you the main shot. Press V for the move tool to move the apple around. Now you'll probably find that there's a hole in the shiny hotspot on the flower there because this section here was the same color as the white background. So what you need to do to fix that is to grab the brush tool and then choose a nice soft edge brush of around about 150 pixels in size and then click on the mask, use a white foreground color and spray to add white to that part of the mask and that restores the missing details. If you're using elements you won't necessarily have a layer mask so what you could do is just spray a white brush tip on this area here to add a shiny hotspot and replace that little hole. Okay once you've finished tweaking your layer mask to fine tune the apple press Control plus T to get the free transform tool and then click here to lock these two together and type in a size of 25% to scale it down to cover the chap's face and then you can drag inside to reposition it like so so it's just covering his eyes and mouth and then hit return to apply the transformation. Now I'm just going to grab the zoom tool by pressing Z and click to zoom in and over the apple a wee bit because you'll notice there's a white edge around here and that's because of the transformation so what we need to do is grab the brush tool click on the mask and then set this to black and then just click and spray to get rid of that white edge around the edge of the frame. You might notice a bit more of it later when we add other background details but you can then tweak the mask to get rid of that white line around the edge of the chap. You might see some at the top here as well. Yeah there's just a hint of it like so. So that just tidies things up. Okay this time we're going to add the curtain so go to Magritte 3 by going to file open and browsing to that file and then you can choose select all, edit copy and then pop to your main document Let's just find that one there and control V or edit paste will add this as a new layer which you can then place behind the apple and the chap like so. Let me just press Z for the zoom tool or control minus just to zoom out and see the curtain on the main layer. We can then drag with the move tool on the curtain to position it towards the side of the frame like so. I'm just going to hit the tab key to get rid of the floating window and then I can fine tune the curtain's position. 
Now I'm going to use Photoshop CS5's warp command to warp the curtain and make it look more organic as if it's being swept aside and then I'll show you how to do something similar using elements. But let's kick off in CS and let's go with the curtain layer selected to edit, transform and then go down to warp and up pops this grid over the curtain. And you can drag in the grid to distort the curtain in lots of organic ways just by clicking and dragging here to make it fit the top of the frame or you can drag within it like so and you can also drag these corner handles here or interior handles to actually then distort and curve the curtain in a nice organic cloth like way so just click and drag these areas up to the top just to hide any transparent areas you can also drag within the grid itself as well as using these control handles until you've got something like that then you can hit return to apply the transformation now if you're using Photoshop Elements you don't have the Warp Transform command but Photoshop can still do similar things if you go to Filter, Distort and go to Liquify then up pops the Liquify command, grab this tool at the top left and set size to around about 600 or so and you can then just warp the image by dragging in a very organic and casual and effective way. It's basically doing the same thing but it's just a different control mechanism. When you're happy click OK to apply the change and there you have a similar result in elements to what you can achieve in CS. I've just popped back to Photoshop CS and to cut a hole in the curtain you can control click on the man's thumbnail to activate the marching ants. We can then transform that selection. If you go to select, transform selection, you can drag and move it and it will then go over the curtain. You can use the arrow keys to fine tune the position and then when you're happy hit return to apply the change. Now if you're using old versions of Photoshop Elements, Elements older than version 9, you can click on layer 2 and then hit backspace to cut a hole in your curtain. I'm just going to control Z to undo that and I'll show you how to do a similar thing using layer masks in CS and Elements 9. And what you need to do here is click on layer 2, go to select inverse to inverse the selection and then if you click the add layer mask icon at the bottom here that will create a layer mask that cuts a hole through your curtain. What you can do then you see is unlock here grab the move tool, click on the mask and you can then move the hole around and that gives you much more control over the way that you're actually positioning things so you can get the balance more effectively. Now let's add our surrealist sky by going to file open and browsing to Magritte before .jpg. You can then go to select all, edit copy and then we'll go back to our main project again and what we'll do is control V or edit paste the sky into the document and place it down at the bottom of the layer stack by dragging it like so. You can then press Control T to get the transform tool and then just drag it up to fit the entire window because it's slightly smaller than our canvas and we can drag it around until we're happy with the position of the clouds and things. Hit return to apply the change. Now it might be that you can't quite see enough of the blue sky in this section here. We need a little bit more colour so what we can do is click on layer 3 grab the rectangular marquee tool and just click and drag an area that does have a bit more blue sky Control c to copy it, Control v to paste it in onto a new layer then use the move tool to slide that to the right just to fill the hole and add a little bit more blue sky like so to select the tie I could use the magnetic lasso tool but for more accurate selection I'm going to click here to create a new layer and pop it above layer 1 then grab the pen tool choose paths and then click to place an anchor point and start drawing around the selected area and as I click and drag the mouse I can add a little curved selection like so and that enables me to then select a curving shape like this tie quite quickly and quite effectively click to place the point then drag to curve it and then you can very quickly make a selection of a rather complicated shape like the tie or a curved car for example um, it's a very cool tool indeed for making curved and complex selections. Click here and then drag just to get a little curve. Place the last point on the first to complete the selection. I can then refine the shape by clicking here to choose the direct selection tool. Click on the path again and then I can move these little um, points around or I can click to adjust the curves with these bezier handles and fine tune my selection. When I'm happy I can right click inside and choose make selection, use a feather of one and click OK and there's the uh, standard marching ants selecting the tie. Once you've selected the tie on a new layer you can then go to edit, fill 
and choose color by clicking and selecting it from the drop down menu choose a nice strong red click OK click OK again and that fills it with the red color you can then control D to deselect the marquee and change the blending mode to multiply to reveal the texture below and also to add the color open Magritte 4 select copy and paste it into the main document and then go to image adjustments and choose desaturated for a monochrome version you can then set its blending mode to overlay and reduce the opacity down to 30% just to create a nice wash of texture to rough up the clean and clinical digital picture that we had and to unify all the elements and finally let's just open the layers palette a little bit more and create a more striking dark figure for the city gent suit to do that I'm going to create a new adjustment layer choose levels up pops the adjustment layer palette and I can pop this above the city gent layer and then tweak the levels just to darken the suit so to darken the blacker shadows let's drag this slider to the right to 20 or so and then let's take this midtone slider to the right as well just to darken the midtones to about 0.80 and you can see it's also darkening the background as well as the suit so what I need to do here is click to select levels 1 and then go to layer and choose create clipping mask and it will then clip to just that particular layer you can see there it's now changing the suit but it's not changing any of the other colors in the rest of the frame so that's a good way of finishing off your surrealist creative project